Hello everyone, Elite Asix here with another video, and today I'm going to help all of your wizards get Unspoken Riz. Today, we're going to go through most of the Storm Design gear in the game and where to get it. I'm not going to include all of it because there is quite a bit of it, but we're just going to go through the most popular ones. There'll be four categories in this video, timestamp for your convenience, hat, robes, boots, and wands. So without further ado, let's get straight into it with the hats. We will start with what's going to be the most popular one, the Storm Elegant hat. This has three main drop points. The first one, and the one I would recommend to you farming it if you don't have it already, is from Otayami the Defiler, who is in the village of Sorrow in Mushu. You can see on screen now how you access him, and he is just available for playing the main story. The hat you're looking for is Otoyami's Cow of Vacancy. The second one is called the Wild Monsoon Brim, and this is what you get dropped in Mirror Lake. I am sure if Snake Eye himself drops it, the second battle have with the Guardians definitely will. This isn't ideal for farming, it has a low drop rate and consume more time, however, you do have a chance of getting other stuff that you'll see throughout this video, as well as some elegant gear for other schools if you have other characters. The last way is just a really a bonus, but you have a chance to get a drop from the Aether Elemental Skeleton Key Boss in the Aeroplanes. This boss can be really tedious to farm, but same as Mirror Lake, but you do have a chance to get all of the elegant gear again, so really it is up to your preference. Swiftly moving on, the next hat I'm going to refer to as the Jester Hat, because I don't actually know what it's called, but this hat can be obtained only for a boss unlocked through a side quest in Newgate Prison in Marleybone. On screen here, I'll show you where you can start the side quest chain if you are looking for it. The hat is called Muggsy's Helm. If you're really lucky, this hat is actually auctionable, so you might see it on the bazaar, but if not, this is how you get it. Just as an added bonus, if you are really lazy, you can get these hats off the bazaar. I don't really like any of them, and there's a reason that you can get them so easily off the bazaar, but they are there as an option if you wish. The last hat I'm going to show you here, once again, is only dropped from Mirror Lake, and it is the Squamish Cal of the City. This is a popular choice of hat, however, unfortunately for Stormy, it can only be dropped here, so it's worth considering that when you're choosing your farming options. I believe Tessie Tessie Snake Tail, as well as the Lake Guardians, both dropped this hat. That was all the hats I've got to show you, so let's not muck around and get straight into the robes. I'm going to combine both of these robes as a sort of two-in-one guide, because you farm them more or less the same place. This first robe here is called Katzenstein's Robe, which, as the name suggests, is dropped by Dr. Katzenstein in Katzenstein's Lab. The other robe you can get in Katzenstein's lab is this one, and it's called Smogger's Charge Robe, which you can get to by collecting these four planks, making a pathway up to the boss. These bosses are beyond tedious to farm for the reason being you have to complete the entire dungeon, which takes just around 10 minutes, purely based off of the walking you do, which is absolutely awful to farm. They do, however, both have reroll chests, so at your own judgement you can use them. Personally, I would use 50 grounds a day on them, just so you can save a bit of time, but that is ultimately your decision. The next robe I'm going to show you here is another auctionable one. It's Black Widow's Dandy Robe, which is dropped by the Black Widow in Knight's Court, who is, unfortunately, a side boss. If you look on screen now, you are looking for this guy here, David Beeman, the NPC who will have the beginning of the quest line. Just follow it through and you can find the boss. Oh, I also forgot to mention that since this is part of the city set, it is also droppable in Mirror Lake from the bosses previously mentioned. And the final robe that I'm going to show you here is the Storm Elegant robe. And unfortunately, guys, this is only dropped in Mirror Lake from Tessie Tessie Snake Tail. Now, I will mention the fact that you can buy this if you do have a lot of crowns. If you just go down into clothing bundles and you scroll down a little bit, you are looking for... Have I already gone past it? No, the Lightning Dancer's attire right here. And you can just buy it for 9,000 crowns, which is quite a lot. If you want to farm it, you can. But I would recommend just farming other robes and just accepting this as a loss because this robe is extremely hard to get. Next up is the boots, and this is going to be an extremely short category because there really isn't many boots options for Storm. I'll show you the Storm Elegant boots, which I'd say in my opinion are the only decent option for the most wizards. I really don't like any other pair of boots, so I can't really say where you get them. I have one other alternative pair that I'll show you momentarily, but starting with these boots, you can get them from Yukai in the Tree of Life dungeon in Mushu. This isn't too hard to farm, but it's a bit of a walk which can be somewhat tedious. And just like the Elegant Hat, you can also get these boots dropped from Mirror Lake, as well as the Aether Elemental if you want to try your luck or have other characters that you want to farm multiple pieces of Elegant gear for. So the other pair of boots I'm going to show you are these Smuggers Germain Boots. Now, I don't personally like them, but they are an option. They do actually go alright with this robe, I'd say. And the fact that they're dropped from Smogger, who you would already be farming for the other robe, is a massive bonus. These are also auctionable. So you can get them on the bazaar if you do happen to just get the robe first or you already have the robe. So it's not a bad option if you really can't be bothered to get the elegant boots, but personally I would get the elegant boots. One last thing I will show you for the boots, and this will be the same for all characters. Um, I really like these boots, these guardian boots. They are an option if you are interested. 
just obviously dye them so they match the colour of your robe. They do go quite well with the Kassenzine robe, which I showed you earlier. On that one, on that one, this one. They do sit in quite well with this. So that is an option, guys, as well, if you really want to switch things up and don't want to use the Elegant Boots. Oh, and I should probably mention that you can buy this for gold from the Crown Shop if you guys are clothing models, guardian outfit, switch to gold. It's 85,000 gold, so quite cheap, and you can get it fairly easily. Now, this leaves me with one more category, which is wands. I'm just going to give you guys a few wand ideas. Not all of them are going to be free to play. I'm just going to show you the ones I use and where I get them from, as well as a few others that you can get. I will try to keep one or two free to play options in there, just for stuff that does look good with the gear that you have equipped. So yeah, let's just get into it. So I'm going to start with the flute, which is an absolute classic wand. I really do love the flute. A lot of my characters have the flute. The fact that it has a unique animation just makes it so perfect. Um, there's not much to say. This one is kind of hard to come by because it was originally a bundle piece, but you do get them in the crown shop as a throwback Thursday now and then. And uh, I don't know what level it is. You'll have to click on it and actually see. Make sure you go to the lower levels if you do go to buy it because they're cheaper. And they tend to go for a pattern of changing colours per level. The next one I'm going to show you is from the Ninja's Law, which is now Ninja's Spellemental Pack, I believe it's called now. Didn't really change much. Anyway, yeah. So this is the Thundering Chasing Spear, I believe it's called, from the Ninja's Law Pack. I really do like this one. I love the animation. I love staffs in this game. They always look nice when you're using them. And there's not much more to say than that. Obviously, it's from a pack, so gamble at your own risk. I wouldn't say it's probably worth it just for a stitch, but if you do really like this wand, and now you know where to get it. Another wand from a crowns pack, unfortunately, from the Road Warriors Horde pack, but this skull, the purple flames, everything about it, really nice. Road Warriors Horde pack, like I said, gamble at your own risk if you do like it, but it is another option if you are interested. Now, this wand you get from Darkmoor. I'm sure all of you are aware of this wand. I really do like the way this looks on the Storm Wizard. I know typically you'd see it on Death Wizards, but for some reason, I just really like the way it looks on the Storm Wizard. Really nice wand, and it is tradable through your bank. So, if you do have one on another character, you can move it over to your Storm. That is one free-to-play option. I've got one more to show you very quickly. So, the last one I'm going to show you, very obvious one, very common pick for Storm Wizards, is the Thunderbolt you can get from the Aquila bosses. Now, what I will say is, I wouldn't go to Mount Olympus and farm the lower level bosses for this one. The reason being is, it's a lot thinner, it doesn't look as full. The level 90 version is a lot thicker and a lot fuller, and it's a lot nicer looking one. I'd recommend farming the Gladiator for this one if you want it, as it's a very easy drop, very common drop from him. And you can get some nice little bonuses there, like the Elephant Omega Ring for... Which I guess is mid-game now, I'm so surprised to say that, because it used to be late-game ring. But yeah, I guess it's a mid-game ring now. And yeah, there is some other nice stuff that you can get dropped in there from him. So definitely check that out if you want this wand. It's a very nice wand, very obvious pick, and very easy to get. Okay, everyone, hopefully that covers everything for this video. I've shown you where to get all of the stitch gear that my Storm Wizard use. Hopefully you did enjoy the video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I do appreciate all the comments and all the love on the return. Uh, it was actually quite heartwarming to see how many of you did watch my return video. As well as left a little comment just letting me know that you're glad to see me back. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Just one more thing. I am live on Twitch tonight. Doing the start of my new series. I will be editing it and uploading it onto YouTube anyway. So you won't be missing out on much if you don't come. But if you do come, come chat with me. Uh, I, I respond quick to chat, you know. I do enjoy the interactions. So be sure to come through if you have the time. I really do appreciate it. Thank you everyone for watching this video. And until next time. Peace.